Welcome back, ladies, to another um, topic, topical studies um, in our Bible studies. Um, we're going to be going more into modesty and what that means in this secular world. So we're going to be touching on subject, subjects as holiness, um, vanity, um, our pursuits, our, our, the way that we view ourselves as women, um, although we're supposed to be looking at our identity through Christ and who we are in Christ. So I'm hoping to really pull back, peel back the layers, okay? And pull back anything to give us the space to be able to really um, search out what the scriptures um, share about how we are viewed by God and how we should view ourselves and others. So the questions, there's gonna be some questions sprinkled, sprinkled throughout this topic to help you. Number one, I want you to be able to explore. Okay, explore the concept of modesty, really have a full understanding what that is, and vanity, and how they compare and contrast. Okay, so we're going to look at vanity through the lens of secularism, being secular, and what and how that, that implication of being secular has an impact on our personal growth as a Christian, and also how it has an impact um, on our spiritual well-being as a woman of God. And also through this, I would like for you to listen to how we're going to compartmentalize or make a difference, a line, okay, between um, superficial beauty, okay, which we're going to say vanity in the secular worldview. We're going to look at those standards and we're going to also see that these standards are being promoted by society versus the genuine beauty found in humility, kindness, and selflessness. So it's my hope that this will help give us space as women to breathe, not to um, receive everything that our eye gates um, are open to or our ear gates are open to and allow that to transform or conform. I'm gonna say conform because that's what the Bible says, conform us into a worldly image. But yet we can have um, what the Bible says, what the gospel says about us as women and how precious we are. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you as you go through these series. Um, I want to give you an opportunity to do an introspective view, internal, a self-reflection on your values, on your beliefs, and the actions regarding modesty or your actions regarding vanity. I also hope to foster a sense of community and support as we as women we do take this topic um, in a way that it can make an impression on us. And I wanna make sure that we have a community where individuals can share their struggles, their victories, their aspirations in cultivating modesty and humility. Also, I hope to instill a sense of hope and optimism and embracing a lifestyle guided by faith, love and authenticity leading to personal fulfillment in Christ and spiritual growth as his disciple. So the goals are going forward is to equip you, okay, with the tools to resist the negative influences that are out there of vanity and embrace the more meaningful and purposeful way of living. I want to also provide a safe and inclusive space when we get into our breakout sessions for individuals to express their thoughts they have questions, you have questions or experiences related to modesty, vanity, and spirituality. And also to empower you through um, the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to come inside of your heart and your mind and your soul and do the work that he is intended to do. And so for you to be able to make a conscious choice that aligns with your values and your beliefs rather than conforming to the fleeting trends that are always coming and going or the societal pressures, okay? So the name of this section is Unveiling the Deceptive Mirror. There is a mirror, okay? And vanity and secularism and its impact on our faith is what we're gonna dive deeper into this video. So in the world of secularism, where cultural creatives, we have all these creatives, influencers, self-help group gurus, 
reign supreme. The battle between modesty and vanity takes center stage. Secularism, with its emphasis on external appearances and materialism, often promotes a shallow version of spirituality. It's something that we begin to worship. It is spiritual. It's a spiritual concept that's happening. And so as this emphasis on the external appearance begin to take over, that shallow version of spirituality is what we begin to focus on. Okay, we focus more on that, on the outward adornment of what we're wearing than the inner transformation. The call to modesty as outlined in biblical teachings goes beyond mere physical appearances and qualities, but to encompass a lifestyle adorned with good deeds and a heart dedicated to worshiping God. So the question I have for you right here is, um, how can we actively practice modesty? And the key word is practice. How do we practice modesty in a culture that promotes vanity and self-centeredness? So that's the question I'm hoping that you're able to answer for yourself, for you to reflect on. I'm going to continue on and hopefully there will be some tidbits and some nuggets that can really fill in the blanks for you. The contrast between confessing that you are a Christian and professing God is a distinct it's a, it's, there's a distinction there, okay? The key is understanding the essence of true faith. We can come and we can confess. We can confess that we believe in the gospel, that Jesus died for us, that we were sinners, that um, he took our penalty through his body, through the blood that was poured out. He died on the cross and he um, rose again from the dead in three days. And because of the authority that's been given to him, for a resurrected life. He, because he was perfect, he was given power to exchange our unrighteousness for his righteousness for his perfect life while he took our sins and he gave us his um, righteousness and at the same time, eternal life for those who believe. So that's confessing. However, there's a next step in the sanctification process, which is professing. Professing is like what you practice. What you where you preach, how you align your life on the way that you preach, or what you say that you value. So while confession is a one-time act, okay, there's other denominations that think confession is repentance, okay? We do confess our sins, but there's a difference when we go into the actual repentance, having godly sorrow, turning away from our sin and going in the opposite direction, okay? Professing, God involves an ongoing commitment to faith, to love, to holiness. Practice what you preach. And as we go through these Bible studies, we as women, we're not going to be perfect. But we do know what the standard is. And we do know that we are given the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit, to help us to make these conscious decisions where we can, our hearts can be more in line with God's word and his purpose. It is a continuous journey of allowing God to really shape our character and transform us into reflections of his image because he has created us in his image and his likeness. And that is what we should be reflecting, not the deceptive mirror that's posted in front of us through the secular world that want to take God out of our lives. And that's what secular is. We want to do it man's way, okay? We want to be the, we know that we were created, the initial, initial original intention was to reflect the image and the likeness of God, okay? So how do we do this? By clothing ourselves with Christ, okay? And that's the salvation and adoring the doctrines of God. And that's our sanctification and that's our professing, practicing what we preach, Allowing the Holy Spirit to give us the power to convict us. We can confess. We have that repentance. And then we continue to confess, okay, our faith. We embody the beauty of the gospel and radiate his glory to the world. 
So and to combat this, we need to seek genuine faith. That's what it comes down to. Based on God's truth, rather than the fleeting illusions of this world. That mirror is a mirage. It's not what you think that you actually see. It changes up its shape and form all the time when you look through the secular mirror of vanity. So by focusing on adorning ourselves Christ-like, with Christ-like qualities and living in alignment with his teaching, we can steer clear of the pitfalls of vanity and secularism. So here's another question. What steps can we take, including myself, to align our hearts with Christ's character and miss the pressure of secularism? There is going to be pressure. Pressure is all around us to come in and to press against us to shape and mold us. But what steps can we take to align our hearts that we can um, stay steadfast? So vanity and secularism serves as a warning sign, a super physical physicality and emptiness. This is basically what you, you're going to get. As soon as you walk away from that mirror, you forget. Okay. As soon as you walk away from that mirror, that mirror um, image becomes empty. Okay. With secular pursuits, with vanity. But the mirror of God is when we look at that mirror, we are to remember God's precepts, his um, commands, his standards. We remember that he's equipped us with the Holy Spirit. We remember that we have been um, um, anointed. We have been, there's a deposit for us. We belong to him. And so through that, we don't forget his word. And so we're actually being shaped and molded. And every time we come to that mirror of the word, we can see that those inner qualities being shaped in us. And when we see it, those are our qualities that are eternal, that won't flee, won't be fleeting and leave. So... The whole idea is that um, vanity is, a, is, is something that we got to be cautious about, okay? Because if you pursue it, you're going to be empty. Just like that mirror when you step away and you don't remember. It leads individuals down a path of self-centeredness, materialism, and submission to worldly standards rather than the divine authority of God. The root of the problem with secularism and vanity is it gets you away from submitting to the authority of God, who God says you are, who he is, how he rules and he reigns, his purposes and his plans. The pursuit of vanity ultimately results in a fleeting and hollow existence, not being filled with the Holy Spirit, devoid of true value, that deposit that you could re have received from the Lord through salvation, when he's going to come back and bring us um, to be with him and glorify us um, and the new heaven and new earth and all the pain and the sorrow and all that be taken away. He gets to reign in perfect justice. There will be peace. There'll be joy. There'll be love. There'll be all the things that he originally attended in our fellowship, unbroken fellowship with him. But if we follow vanity, then we're actually are not receiving that spiritual inheritance and that lasting beauty. You know, when I think about um, the glow that Moses had when he was in the presence of the Lord, I think about how the people were gazed at him to a point where they wanted to see when it was going to fade. And eventually it did fade. Um, so... What Moses had to do for them to continue to hear God's word and not to be focused on him so much, not to allow that to be something that distracts him, he had to put a veil over his face. So today, when we look at unveiling, we want to look at, are we unveil, allowing ourselves to be unveiled in the presence of God, where his attributes, his characteristics, his image and his likeness can be seen upon us and we will have that that presence of that glow and that Shekinah glory where he initially meant for us to be clothed in, okay? So what I want to, you to consider is this. Consider a situation where you were faced with the choice between following popular trend or staying true to your values. Trends are coming out all the time. How do you navigate this dilemma? And what insights did you gain from this experience? 
So think of that. These are steps to help you to realize what is your potential um, triggers that causes you to lean more into secularism. And so you can really think about those scriptures that are going to help you to stay in alignment with what the word shares. And um, I just wanted that question, to, you know, that's application. Think of those situations where you're faced. Maybe if it was for me, it was homecoming or CIAA or the certain standard of dress or it's a birthday party or if it's a concert or even if it's church, what people think is appropriate in church. There's different situations that, hey, there may be a popular trend and we have to stay true to our values, even in those settings. Vanity is looking into a counterfeit mirror that distorts reality. It leads one away from the genuine beauty found in God. So it's a counterfeit mirror and it's distorted. You don't see well out of it. And it will cause you not to see the genuine beauty that the Lord has inside of you. So as we navigate the complexities of secular culture, do you seek discernment? What about sound judgment? and spiritual guidance to steer clear of the pitfalls of vanity and embrace a life with genuine faith, humility, and righteousness. Remember, vanity, on the other hand, if you choose that, will lead you down a path of emptiness and superficiality. So here are some questions. In what areas of your lives, of our lives, do we see the influence of secularism through vanity? I named a few, but there are some other areas. Maybe it's at your workplace, okay? And how can we counteract it with biblical truths? How can we encourage one another to pursue a life of genuine faith rather than fall into the traps of worldly illusions, okay? So to wrap this up, just want to share that this counterfeit mirror, you know, are you being submissive to that? Are you being submissive to God's authority? Okay, vanity is a byproduct of lies. Satan, he was prideful about the way that he looked. It says it in scripture. There is a secular agenda of lies using vanity as a device. It is a device that Satan uses. The secular agenda is opposite of the moral judgments of God. It is self-conscious versus a cognitive commitment to a self-existing, self-revealing God. Allow him to reveal to you, okay? Not that you self-consciously just start coming with, up with your own ideas. You cognitively meditate on the word of God and allow the word of God to reveal things to you. He reveals who he is and he transformed Christian disciples through the modest way that we view ourselves, uh, understanding and how we should actually view him. Not through a moral a re revolution that's happening today where what is right is wrong, wrong is right. I mean, all the little ups and downs. Not that, okay? Not a revolt against who God is in us. Not that, okay? So in doing so, looking in the distorted mirror of lies, secularism is a process. You're going through a process, a downward spiral process. Rather than an upward um, process of sanctification as the Lord continues to sanctify you, purify your hearts and your motives and your thoughts. Okay. So as we go through this process, either secularism or sanctification, I want you to be mindful that society is going to become, um, more less Jesus centered. Okay. They're not going to, they're going to want to take Jesus a less or take him away or just be secularism is not having God in um, the culture. So society will become less like Jesus, less centered on Jesus, less centered on God, and more modern in its beliefs and behaviors and godlessness. You have to remove the authority of God, and that's what secularism does. That's what vanity that devices use will do as well. So their behavior is going to be more godlessness and they're going to believe in false gods, although they may not even 
they, they can accept other gods, but they just don't accept the true and living God, okay? So the actual mirror reveals our hearts for secularism. If you look into the mirror of God, okay? But anything that I've shared in this message kind of hits home. It's okay, all right? This is what the word does. We should be okay to come into the presence of the Lord in his word. Allow the word to search our hearts, okay? And what we do is our, is our response to the gospel, our response to what the Lord shares. Um, and that is the part that we repent. And so when this mirror, the Lord's mirror, God's mirror, shows the vanity in our hearts, okay? I want you to know that if we begin to stop substituting a secular idol and accept the true and living God's God in the place of that idol of vanity in our heart, then we're not going to no longer adopt the culture's, the culture's way of thinking. Instead, we're going to accept the adoption of the Father. We're going to accept him as being our Father and who he says we are. We're going to take on his namesake. And we are going to be less likely to absorb the culture's definitions of manhood and womanhood. Okay, we're going to begin to search the scriptures to shape us and to sculpt us and refine us. So as we stepped away from this lesson, play it again. Take some notes. Write down some key things that struck a chord in your heart. Be open and allow the true word of God to reveal to you. If you're leaning more in the secular way of vanity or leaning more into modesty and holiness and having genuine faith in God, allow him to share and reveal to you who you are in Christ, what your purpose is in life and how you are to be adorned with the gospel and good deeds. Come back, look at the next video. I'm gonna go more in depth. This next video is going to talk about the battle against self-idolatry. We're going to get into it, okay? Resisting vanity and embracing God's truth. And we're going to get into some of these scriptures that I have for you. And I want you to search out the scriptures in the Word and allow the Holy Spirit to work in your heart as well in your mind. So thank you. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Take care and have an amazing day.